Brothers and sisters, last week I shared with you the second verse of surah number 67, surah al-mulk. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتِ وَالْحَيَاتِ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا Meaning that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has created this cycle of life and death. He gave us hayah. He created us. He brought us into existence. And this existence that we enjoy, this existence that we benefit from, is limited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by death. The time from point A to B is what we call our life. And this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, during this chance that we have been granted, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in different situations. Sometimes we may find ourselves in setbacks, and at other times we might find ourselves ahead in the game. Sometimes we might be doing good, and everything is going according to our plans and expectations, when all of a sudden, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevails. When all of a sudden destiny takes over and we find ourselves struggling. Just like the weather. We as human beings find ourselves in the, in the different seasons of life. One day or one month we might be in full bloom and blossom. And at other times, we might find ourselves wilted and dwindling. All of these changes that we experience in our life are a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's test. Whether the fluctuation we experience is financial, physical, emotional, or even spiritual. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He tests you. This is all a bala and a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see how well we act or react during that time. And the way we act in any situation, the way we react in any circumstance, it heavily depends on the way we perceive that situation and that circumstance. This is the reminder and advice that I started to share last week. That as Muslims, we need to perceive things. We need to form the mindset about these tests that they, in, in such a way that will help us act in the right manner. That will help us act and react in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to. When we perceive things correctly, it will help us do the right thing in order to succeed that level. To succeed in that examination, in that trial and test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to by bala, liyabluwa. When put through the test of setbacks, misfortune and disappointment, when put through the test of loss or illness, a Muslim should perceive this phase of a life's test as a means of maghfir, as a means of forgiveness of one's sins, as was highlighted in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ about being pricked by a thorn. A, a setback or misfortune should, make, should be a means of making you stronger and grooming you for bigger and better things in life. You know, just like a bow and arrow, right? You give an archer a bow and arrow, the further you pull that arrow back, the farther and stronger it hits its target. 
So sometimes Allah pulls us back to make us stronger when we move forward. And sometimes the different tests and trials that we experience in life is a way to groom us and for us to gain experience. For us to learn a lesson. What to avoid, what not, what not to avoid. What should be the plan next time? What measures to take? and allows us to gain experience for the time in our life when, there, when the stakes might be higher and there is much more to lose. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us trip and fall. Sometimes He makes us trip and fall so that when we are down on the ground, when our faces are covered with that dust, as we wipe the dirt and grime off our face to we, faces, we remember to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in essence, during any trial and test, the first course of action of any Muslim should be directly to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To affirm our faith. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. Praising the believers that when calamity afflicts them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. To affirm one's faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remind one's self of their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they are the creation of the Creator, they are the subject of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will. Brothers and sisters, no one will last forever. And no one has lasted forever. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un is not a phrase just to say when someone passes away. But whenever we experience a setback, and we need to think about what we are saying. Think about it. You know, we say it very naturally. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. But I'll share with you a tidbit. Inna lillahi. Indeed, we are all for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un. And indeed, all of us will return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person doesn't say, Inni lillahi wa inni, wa inni ila, ila rabbi arji'a. It is in plural. That guess what? You are not the only one who is going through a test. You are not the only one who is being groomed. Every single person, brother and sister in this hall, everyone in this world, every human being walking on the face of this earth is dealing with some type of issue. They are going through with they are going through something. Whether that person expresses it or not, whether we can tell by looking at someone or not, every single person is going through issues. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We all belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are all subject to His will. We are all subject to his trials and tribulations. And each and every single one of us will return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should be there for one another. To affirm our faith with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to remind ourselves that we are not alone. And this is the reflection that we get from Surah Al-Asr. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by the passage of time that indeed all of mankind is in loss. Except for those who believe. Who believe in one Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whose faith leads them to the belief that everything is a test and trial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when your mindset is correct, when you perceive everything to be from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it leads to وَعَمِلُ الصَّالِحَاتِ When your faith is correct, when you recognize that everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps you 
and drives you to do the right things. You don't abandon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't complain about God. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this trait of the human being, of some human beings. In Surah Al-Fajr, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about on one side gifting someone, a blessing someone, but on the other side, وَأَمَّا إِذَا مَا بَتَلَاهُ فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَةً On the other hand, when Allah tests someone, فَقَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَةً and limits and restricts his sustenance, makes things a little tight, which is a test, ibtalahu. فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا That person says, My Lord has humiliated me. He has disgraced me. Tests and trials, struggles and setbacks are not an indication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are not beloved to Him. They are not an ind indication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you are not worthy of His blessing. They are merely a test. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A trial. Did not the Prophet sallallahu go through the harshest trial ever to face mankind? The Prophet sallallahu said, Udhitu fillahi wa ma yu'da ahad. The pain I have been given, no one else has been given. Wa ukhiftu fillahi wa ma yukhafu ahad. The fear that I have been put through, no one has been put through. But yet the Prophet ﷺ was the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation to him. So to perceive our struggles as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a phase in our life to do the right thing, بالحق, and to advise one another, وصيح, to counsel one another, to support one another in doing that good. In haq, to counsel one another with sincerity, with love and compassion, without offending one another. And at the same time, if someone gives us advice, to accept it without feeling offended. When we do tawasaw bil haq, this is what takes humanity out of khusr, out of loss. This is what takes our community out of loss. This is what helps our community move forward and progress. This is what will help the situation under our own roofs succeed. And this is what will help this ummah regain its glory. وَتَوَاصَوْ بالحق. To be sincere. And in a loving and compassionate way, without offending anybody. Back in the day when any Sahaba, any Sahabi was told, Ittaqullah, to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would accept that as a favor. You're telling me to fear Allah? Thank you so much. Thank you for reminding me of that. But now try to insinuate or hint to someone, even in a nice civilized manner. Even with love and compassion. Brother, you need to fear Allah. Who the heck are you? You fix yourself first. You fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first. A phrase that was a phrase that was accepted by Sahaba and appreciated one another for is taken as offense. What are you trying to say? Fear God? You fear God. And this mentality of not wanting to accept sincere counsel, especially when it's genuine, this is what brings insan to khusr. Because tawasi is a two-way street. You give advice to one another. And obviously there is a way and there is a wisdom in helping one another to be on the straight path. You know, some people, they get very jumpy and they get very anxious to correct others without realizing the negative impact it might have on that person we are trying to correct. Our intentions may be right, 
But the way we go on about it does not sit well. Especially with our youngsters. And especially the behavior of a lot of people towards our new Muslim brothers and sisters. Oh my God. Her hair is sticking out of her hijab. Let me go fix it while she is still praying. This need to immediately want to correct something right away. Your hand like naturally moves. Oh, let me, let me stick her hair back in her hijab. Oh, she went in rukur. Let me catch her as soon as she's done. And without even asking what your name is or how's everything going on. Oh, sister, you know you're supposed to be doing it like this. Oh, brother, what is this? This is a tattoo? Brother, you're supposed to be praying like this. Explaining to the youngsters and teens. Just wanting to correct someone immediately. This is not the right way. And this nonsense, nonsense needs to stop. When was the last time I reached out to a new Muslim? When was the last time I invited a new Muslim or new Muslimah to my house to have dinner with my family? When was the last time I got to personally know a Muslim brother or, or sister for the sisters? Have we ever heard their story? Have we ever heard how they discovered the true path? Because us as born Muslims, majority of us, we didn't discover Islam. Islam found us in the laps of our mothers and fathers. And Alhamdulillah for that. But when you hear the stories that our converted Muslim brothers and sisters have to share, it is an uplifting moment for us spiritually. And it allows us, it will allow us to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our deen, for our iman, for growing up in, in, with Islam. We will learn to appreciate our religion more. Have we ever shared with them what sacrifices they went through? Not every new Muslim has it easy. Majority don't. They get shunned by their families. They get disassociated by their relatives. Especially when the time of Christmas comes around. Which for most of their lives was a joyous, warm family event. Now they are being shunned by their family. Have we made these sacrifices for our religion? They go through a lot, brothers and sisters. Which brings me to the fourth point, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Asr. To advise one another, to support one another in sabr, in being patient. If someone seems troubled, to offer them a hug. If someone is in pain, to offer them comfort. If someone has a burden on their chest, to hear them out. You know, brothers and sisters, a lot of times you don't even need to say anything back. Just to hear them out is enough to make a person feel good. Enjoining patience. This is a part of the concept of tawasi bi sabr. Remember when I was talking about how we need to change the way we perceive our tests and trials and struggles from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How we need to think of them as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A way Allah is trying to make us stronger and groom us. Well, we are all human beings. Sometimes we need to be reminded of this from one another. You know what, brother? Everything's going to be okay. You know what, sister? Everything's going to be all right. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is elevating your status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is helping, is grooming you for bigger and better things. And I know you're going through much pain. But in the meanwhile, to help lessen the burden and to make this test easier for you, how can I help? 
What can I offer? How can I comfort you? Subhanallah. You know, when you counsel and give advice to someone, you have to physically be there. And at the same time, you have to emotionally, mentally and spiritually be connected with that person to have a greater effect. Being there for one another. This is why we have the concept of visiting the sick in Islam. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Hadith Al-Qudsi says that don't you know if you would have visited that sick person, inda, you would have found me by that person. This is why we have the concept of helping the needy, quenching the thirst of the thirsty, clothing the bare. The concept of sharing the warmth of our hand on the head of a yatim and an orphan. Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us through things so that we can develop a sympathy for those who may go through the same things that we have been through in our life. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through similar things. أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى Did we not find you an orphan and gave you protection? Did we not find you in search for truth and guide you? Did we not find you financially restricted and made things easy for you? The Prophet ﷺ went through many tests and trials in his life well before being crowned with prophethood. He lost his father, he lost his mother, he lost his grandfather, he lost his uncle. And then he lost his wife, his rock. He went through all of these things. And it made him the compassionate and merciful person, the most merciful person to ever walk the face of this earth. So this is what being an ummah is all about. This is why we have the concept of man kana fi hajati akhihi kana Allahu fi hajati. Whoever helps another person in the time of need, Allah helps that person as he is helping his brother. So we need to enjoin one another. We need to advise one another of being patient in a way that is compassionate and merciful to help and remind one another, one another to comfort one another, to help one another understand the concept of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even in times of hardship. What is that? How do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for misfortune? How do you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for setback? Why would you? It's all about the way you perceive things. It all revolves around the concept of looking at the glass half full or half empty. To develop a positive outlook in life will develop happiness. It will help us move on. You know, once there was a famous writer. And he went through a lot at a certain age in life. And he had a journal and he wrote in there that this year has been so horrible. Last year, I had a gallbladder, my gallbladder was removed. And I had to stay stuck in bed for such a long time after that surgery. The same year when I reached the age of 60, I was forced to retire from my job which I loved. The job of writing, being at a publishing company. Then he said the same year, I experienced the sorrow of the loss and death of my father. The same year my son got in involved in, in a horrible car accident, because of which he was hospitalized and could not pass his medical exam. It has been such a bad year. And he wrote that and left it on his desk. Then his wife came in. And she saw him so sad and weeping. She knew something was wrong. So she checked his journal. She took his journal, tore that piece of paper out, and then wrote something on there and gave the journal back to the husband. And said, read this. So the husband, he read, he, he, he read what was written in that journal. 
And what was written on it? Last year, I finally got rid of that gallbladder that was causing me so much pain. Last year, I finally retired from my job with sound health and a sound mind to pursue my passion of writing without being told what to do, without having to meet deadlines. Last year, my father at the age of 95, without being dependent on anyone, without too much suffering, went to meet his Lord. And in the same year, God blessed my son with a new life that he got away from a horrible accident and only had to spend a few weeks in the hospital, but God spared his life. You see how the perception was turned around on everything? And at the end she wrote that this year was a huge blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A huge blessing from God. So this gives us the, what to take home from this. That it is not happiness that makes us grateful. We don't always have to have things going our way to be happy. But we have to be grateful in every situation in our life in order to gain happiness. And that is the perception that a Muslim should have of trials and tribulations. As our year is winding down, and as we are getting ready to welcome a new year, we need to start looking at things in a positive way, on a personal level, and on the level of a community, to stop crying about and complaining about, complaining about what we have not done, or as a community where we are not currently. But to look with a positive sense of mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me still life to make achievements, to gain certain things, and to pursue those dreams. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be thankful for whatever we have, and to be thankful for whatever we are yet to gain.